Folks, uh, I came first of all to say thank you. Thank you to all of you in this room. You've not only cared, but you've, uh, you've been breaking your neck the last couple of years to deal with this overall issue of anti-Semitism. And I know many of you are personally impacted by what's happened in Israel. There are thousands of dual citizens, maybe some of your relatives that are there. And Doug, I want to thank you for all the work you've done on behalf of our administration to combat anti-Semitism. <clears throat> and uh, I apologize. I've been on the phone around the clock with our friends around the world, quite frankly, discussing what's going on in Israel. And, uh, and uh, I want you to know that uh, I want to thank you as well for uh, all of you as well for working, uh, the work you're doing to bring comfort and uh, in this moment of grief for those of you who are grieving as well. And, uh, and you'll read this weekend in synagogue, the Torah teaches us that God made stars to, quote, give light on the earth and separate light from darkness. Give light on the earth and separate light from darkness. You know, uh, it's been hard to find that light during the darkness of these past few days. Uh, when terrorist groups like Hamas uh, brought not only terror, but sheer evil, sheer evil, to the world, evil that echoes the worst and matches, in some cases, exceeds the worst atrocities of ISIS. More than 1,000 civilians slaughtered in Israel. And by the way, I've been speaking with a number of Israeli leaders, a number of leaders around the world, leaders in the region as well. And, uh, you know, uh, among those who have been victimized this evil, who went who have been killed are at least 22 American citizens. This attack uh, was uh, a campaign of pure cruelty, not, not just hate, but pure cruelty against the Jewish people. And I would argue it's the deadliest day for Jews since the Holocaust, the deadliest day since the Holocaust. One of the worst chapters in human history they remind us all that that expression I learned from my dad early on, silence is complicity. I'm not, I mean, silence is complicity. It really is. And I want you to know, I think you've already figured it out. I refuse to be silent. I know you refuse to be silent as well. my senior staff, you all represent a voice that America has to hear. America not, can't be silent. You know, uh, we not only reject terrorism, but uh, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond rejecting terrorism. You know, I spoke with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu for I don't know how many times, this, but this, again this morning. And uh, already we're uh, we're surging additional military assistance to the Israeli Defense Force, including ammunition, interceptors to replenish the Iron Dome, and we've moved the U.S. carrier fleet to the Eastern Mediterranean, and we're sending more fighter jets there in that region. And made it clear, made it clear to the Iranians, be careful. We want to make it real clear. We're working on every aspect of the hostage crisis in Israel, including deploying experts to advise and assist with recovery efforts. Now, the press is going to shout to me, and many of you are, that, you know, what are you doing to bring these, get these folks home? If I told you, I wouldn't be able to get them home. Folks, there's a lot we're doing, a lot we're doing. I have not given up hope on bringing these folks home. But the idea that I'm going to stand here before you and tell you what I'm doing is bizarre. So I hope you understand how bizarre I think it would be to try to answer that question. In the days ahead, we're going to continue to work closely with our partners in Israel and around the world to ensure Israel has what it needs to defend its citizens, its cities, and to respond to these attacks. As I said yesterday, my commitment to Israel's security and the safety of the Jewish people is unshakable. The United States has Israel's back. 
and I have yours as well, both at home and abroad. You know, you can see the pain in some of your faces as I walked into this room. You okay, kiddo? Well, your fear for family, friends back in Israel, you worry about kids being targeted in school, about, uh, about going about their daily lives. Uh, you hurt uh, by the downplaying of Hamas's atrocities and blaming Israel. This is unconscionable. And I've asked members of my team, including Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas and Attorney General Garland, to work intensively with our Jewish community partners, so, so many of you here, to set up security around Jewish life in America, identify, prevent, and disrupt emerging threats that occur. You know, we're also going to continue to condemn and combat anti-Semitism at every single turn, at every turn. You know, the past few days have been a solemn reminder that hate never goes away. If the hold on a second, I used to, I used to think you could defeat hate, that you could make it, 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 all it does is go underground. It just goes underground, it doesn't go away. It only hides until it's given a little oxygen, a little bit of oxygen, and that's why I've secured the largest ever increase in funding for physical security for nonprofits, including synagogues, Jewish community centers, Jewish day schools. And in May, we released the first ever national strategy to counter anti-Semitism with the input from many of you in this room. Many of you in this room helped write that. It's the most ambitious, comprehensive effort to combat anti-Semitism in American history, in all of American history. And we're aggressively implementing it. But but we must all do our part and forcefully speak out against anti-Semitism and push back against the attempts to deny or distort the facts. To make clear, there is no place for hate in America, not against Jews, not against Muslims, not against anybody. And we mourn the act, an act uh, you uh, and so many leaders have across the country showing us what thousands of years of Jewish history has shown us. The enduring strength, and I mean this sincerely, the enduring strength and spirit of the Jewish community. If, I, if you excuse a point of personal privilege, you should say in the Senate. That's why I took my kids, everyone when they turned 14 years old, one at a time, put them on a plane and took them to Dachau. I wanted them to see that you could not not know what was going on walking through those gates. You could not fail to understand as a country what was going on. And that's a fact. It had a profound impact on my children and my grandchildren. Some thought taking a 14-year-old grandchild did not make a mistake, but I took them one at a time. I got three more to go. And folks, it's important. You know, the miracle of Israel is Israel. It's Israel itself. The hope it inspires. The light it represents to the world. And, uh, folks, um, I was asked uh, in one of my very frank conversations with Bibi and uh, with Herzog, so why do I feel so deeply about this? It's not about the region. I truly believe we're the no Israel no Jew in the world would be ultimately safe. It's the only ultimate guarantee. The only ultimate guarantee. The only ultimate guarantee. And folks, because of you, and I mean this sincerely, because you're speaking up, because of the intensity and the intellect and the brilliance you bring to this cause, I think we have a chance to end this in a way that is it makes it very difficult for it to be repeated. I want to thank you for your leadership. And as I said, there's a, a lot to talk about. And, uh, but I'm really, quite frankly, concerned as to, it's hard to talk about this without detail. And it's contrary to our interests to let out the detail of what we're going on. I mean, this is just round the clock, as you understand, you fully understand. But, you know, uh, I've known Bibi for over 40 years, in a very frank relationship. I know him well. And the one thing that I did say 
that it is really important that Israel, with all the anger, frustration, and just did not explain it, that exists, is that they operate by the rules of war. The rules of war. And there are rules of war. And, uh, and I believe Israel is doing everything in its power to, uh, to pull the country together, stay on the same page, and we're going to do everything in our power to make sure Israel will succeed and, God willing, to bring home those Americans who are in harm's way. I'm, I'm going to let you all have the private conversation you've been having, which you should continue to have. But uh, it just came to basically, I really mean it from the bottom of my heart. I give you my word as a Biden. Thank you. Thank you for the intensity of your support. It matters. It matters that Americans see what's happening. I mean, I, I, I've been doing this a long time. I never really thought that I would see and have confirmed pictures of terrorists beheading children. I never thought I'd ever. Anyway, I, uh, but there are countries in the region that are trying to be of some help, including Arab nations who are trying to be of some help. So, uh, anyway. From my faith, from my faith, my faith that, uh, that at the core of every human being is a spark of humanity and decency. It's got to be touched. It's got to be spoken to. That's what you do. That's why you're here. It's not about, you know, revenge. It's about, it's about decency. Just basically decent, just basic decency. Treating people with a sense of, I don't know quite how to say it, but I know we can overcome this. I know we can overcome this. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.